This is the first of our second cycle of the USM SDG uh, seminar series. Uh, after a very successful year, uh, last uh, academic year, uh, we went from September to, to May uh, with uh, these seminars uh, that touch upon issues that affect uh, St. Martin society. This, this uh, seminar, uh, which will touch upon the topic of poverty, uh, is, I think, very important, especially uh, on the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, which is today, and that uh, has been celebrated uh, since 1982, uh, with the first uh, celebration being in, in, in Paris, but has been endorsed by the United Nations uh, family. Um, uh, and I think it's very important to reflect upon the words of uh, this day that we identify uh, as the eradication of poverty, because the important word here is eradication, uh, because for many uh, years uh, there has been talk about uh, eliminating, reducing, uh, combating poverty, uh, but eradication of poverty is something else. It is a commitment uh, to uh, eliminating inequality, uh, it is also uh, a commitment to allowing for development and the development uh, of all countries, uh, which is considered uh, under international law a human right uh, uh, development uh, in itself. And so when we talk about development, <clears throat> we talk about the elimination or the eradication uh, of, of poverty. How can we eliminate poverty if we cannot identify, identify poverty? And on St. Martin, we're lacking something. We're lacking a poverty line. Uh, so a poverty line has been done, uh, in, it's done in most countries. It's essential if you want to tackle poverty. And uh, hopefully this evening, we could enter into this discussion. I would like to share with you that uh, USM, University of St. Martin, uh, last year signed an MOU with the St. Martin Anti-Poverty Platform, uh, which is also a coalition. It's a platform of different organizations and individuals on St. Martin who are dedicated. So Mr. Yesterun is here and will be speaking on, on uh, the platform's behalf. Um, but what we have done is a, uh, made a commitment, USM has made a commitment uh, to contributing to the eradication of poverty by studying uh, poverty. And what our plans are uh, for the upcoming academic year uh, is to study poverty, uh, to understand how poverty operates here on St. Martin. And we have uh, called in the National Institute for Family and Finance Information in the Netherlands to help us do that. So we're coming up with a plan uh, we had hoped that we would get uh, support from uh, the government uh, and the incoming, the government to come uh, on St. Martin and civil society uh, in general. Because there are many ways to look at poverty. You could look at it scientifically, you could look at it in numbers, you could look at it ideologically, you could look at it faith-based, uh, from a faith-based perspective. Um, but what uh, I would like to suggest is that we look at poverty from a human rights perspective. Okay, the government of uh, St. Martin um, follows the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. You see it over here, right? Uh, on my bag, um, that is the uh, 2030 agenda of the United Nations, and which means that uh, St. Martin has adopted this uh, agenda to reach a more uh, prosperity and uh, get uh, a better world uh, by yeah, complying with the targets uh, attached to these uh, global goals, as we call them more like a content of what the presentation concerns, the fact that poverty is an international problem, that it is a part of the SDG, goal one, but I would stretch to say, indeed, the entire sustainable development agenda is indeed a poverty eradication agenda. 
it is not a goal that can be suffice in, it's not a, it's not a topic that is sufficiently handled in one goal. And it does stretch, like Mr. Kamora said, it is as close to us as even the violence in our homes. It has a direct link to the, the level of poverty in your society and in your country. So then we move to absolute poverty. I can assure you absolute poverty indeed is the $1.90 a day, which our hourly working wage already is more than. So we can simply say once you are working in St. Martin, you already are out of absolute poverty based on the world's dollar daily amount. There are different perspectives in looking at poverty. We have ideologies that are socialist, some are neoliberal. We are using the poverty line as a measurement, especially in the SDGs. However, it is not predominantly one line, for example. It can be one line for absolute poverty. It can be one line for relative poverty. It can be another line for what a social standard, a social minimum should be, and a combination of lines. It's not necessarily a singular project. Some of the main causes of poverty in the Caribbean and the three that we particularly wanted to highlight, especially due to Hurricane Irma, which really gave us an unemployment issue that we did not foresee since the recession in 2008. So because of it, we would like to touch on unemployment, underemployment particularly for a lot of our youngsters, and inadequate incomes. More than $1.90 per day, but inadequate because of our cost of living and perhaps even our notion of what a standard of living on this island should be. Central to poverty and inequality are, first, the nature and quality of our employment opportunities, given that they are hospitality opportunities, and a hospitality industry is run by blue-collar workers, primarily, and what blue-collar workers earn. Given in nature also that some of our jobs are more female-oriented or male-oriented, and even that determines what the salaries are in the hospitality industry. And secondly, the adequacy of, well, adequacy or inadequacy, depending on your opinion, of social safety nets to support the most vulnerable. Unemployment, it is a definition by Investipedia in 2019, that is a situation of a person actively seeking for employment and is unable to find work. We've had this issue since 2017 and we're doing our best indeed to bridge gaps where it's possible. We're doing training programs, we're offering stipends, we're having work also, we're putting people to work and giving them stipends based on the projects that government is running. But we do recognize that training is not work. So though you are getting a stipend, you are indeed still unemployed. We have some statistics from Labor Affairs. Currently, we have 429 persons registered as unemployed. Observation tells us that that number is much larger. We have 15 vacancies registered at Labor Affairs. Again, observation shows us that number is much larger. There is 130 persons assessed, 35 directly employable, 50 employable with training, and 45 not suitable for employment. Now, these figures, albeit that they're small, they do tell us something. They tell us that labor affairs is not being accessed enough as a point of information for persons seeking jobs and for persons that are providing jobs. So it is indeed alarming that these are our figures, but this is the statistics we're able to provide based on the persons that feel the need to access labor affairs for job seeking opportunities or to promote, advertise their own job availabilities. In the informal sector, there's no clear picture of how the employment or unemployment or underemployment works, which is also a, a ground for further abuse, further violence, further inadequate incomes, overwork, again, feeding our poverty on the island. Some of our figures for unemployment. 
if you look at our participation rates right at the end, you do see that we have a fairly large group of people able to work in our society. Unfortunately, when you break it down by sector, though they're not in the agricultural sector, they are in hospitality, feeding to, to some of our additional problems. Underemployment, a measure of employment and labor force utilization, where workers, where the labor force is divided by unemployed and underemployed. Underemployed is a bit interesting for us. We have tradesmen, they've been self-taught or taught by family members or even taught by friends, but they're not certified. So they cannot get a job based on their qualifications. And we do not have sometimes the means of certifying them, or they do not have the means to actually go into the institutions to, to get the kind of expertise that would certify them. These are an inadequate incomes. We have our salaries being too low to meet the basic needs for food, clothing, and shelter. And this is a perception of some in the department because you're looking at a combined household income of 5,000 guilders, which is way above the $1.90 a day. At the same time, you're not necessarily looking at a household of one or two persons. You're looking at a household sometimes as large as seven, eight, 10, with 12 persons, with a household income of 5,000 guilders. It is the same even for households of 10,000 guilders. The only difference is instead of 11 or 12 persons, it can go down to maybe three or four persons. Another chart of the monthly combined income in guilders. You see in 2017 and 2018 there are changes, percentages of change in how the income distribution is actually being allocated on the island. Again, that nine to 10,000 income bracket is indeed our least penetrated bracket because you're talking then two middle income or one high income and low income person in the same household. I would stretch to say absolute poverty, that zero to 1,000 guilders for us, the zero is more, the one to 1,000, we are more on the upper end in that income bracket. So our absolute poverty in terms of the $1.90 a day, for example, I would say we have eradicated that. I would like to, before I go and explain what it is that we suggest and what we see as what we have to do, if you didn't hear it yet, on the radio and in other uh, media like uh, newspapers and social media, which poverty definition we are going to use? There are so many differences and it has to be clear what we as anti-poverty platform see as the poverty definition that we should address. Secondly, are we going to talk about combating poverty or eradicating poverty. The invitation for tonight was the topic, combating poverty. And I will just briefly touch it because this has a whole history. Then we got with the invitation two days ago, three questions. And I would like to answer those questions. First question was, what initiatives have been taken to combat poverty on St. Martin? Secondly, what is the poverty line on St. Martin? And the last question, can we eradicate poverty? We say, if we are citizens of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, then we have the same human rights. And if we have the same human rights, the equal right not to be discriminated means that for all human rights, we should be treated equal. And we even go a step further. The French Republic already showed that here on the northern side. When you have the same right as other people in the state, because of your special conditions, we can 
adjust what you should get. So for instance, here on the northern side, people can get the same uh, minimum wage or the same social allowances as in the French side, but they get an addition because of the cost of living. So with that said, which definition are we going to use? So we have to look at Holland. And we see that in the Netherlands, the Central Bureau of Statistics uses different definitions to give the statistics. The Central, uh, the Social Cultural Plan Bureau in the Netherlands also give other definitions. And so when we look at the best islands that has been incorporated in the Netherlands, we see that until today, they don't want to give them the same social minimum level as in the Netherlands. And when we look at our countries in the kingdom that are so-called autonomous, we see that the social minima differ from Curaçao to Aruba to St. Martin. The 2007 definition of the Netherlands Antilles was interesting because there they wanted to define what is the absolute poverty line. And as I told you, they have been using this UNDP definition. What is the limitation of the definition? If I start to tell you that this is your minimum wage, and I put it deliberately already low, and I deliberately don't make it equal as in the Netherlands, what does it mean? Then your poverty line is also, per definition, lower. That's what we have been doing. Now we went 10, 10, 10. And what did we do in St. Martin? We copied what was in the Netherlands Antilles. And we said, oh, wait a moment. We didn't do the research as in Curaçao. So we have no poverty line in St. Martin. But the fact is that are people living in poverty? They're experiencing the poverty. They can't make the ends meet. And so something has to be done about that. So a social poverty line, even that in the time of the Netherlands until it already was recognized. Decent housing. When we look at that as poverty, if the World Bank and the National Recovery and Resilience Plan with the help of our own Vromi department, have established that 70 to 80% of the 19,000 housing units in St. Martin have been structurally damaged by IRMA, it means that we talk about 13 to 15,000 housing units. Mr. Knops, who recently was here, where we were trying to get how much homes have been repaired already, said, a thousand homes in two years time. Which means to say, if it is 13,000 to 15,000 homes that we have to fix with this speed, and with that Dutch money, it's 26 to 30 years that we will be waiting for all these homes to be rebuilt. Impossible, unacceptable. So that is just to show you if we talk poverty, it's not only about what is the income coming in my pocket, it's also what about my housing condition, my housing situation. And just by illustrating here, we can go further. The good news out of it is somebody has to stand up for his right. Poverty alleviation or poverty eradication is two things, two different things. What was poverty alleviation? From since donkey years, the 60s, we know in the Netherlands and Tillys, we know we call it social allowances. Understand. Social pensions, AOV. In the 70s now, with AMFO financing, there was a program to combat poverty. So the wording, combating poverty, armoede bestrijding. If you have your fire, you combat the fire. But tomorrow, you can have another fire. The idea with eradication of poverty is that tomorrow, I don't want to see much more poverty. 
So I agree with no poverty, and especially with the intention, no more poverty in all its forms. Because we are right now in 2019, and we will still want to combat something that had to be eliminated long time. So that shows you why we choose not for poverty alleviation, but for eradication of poverty. So with that said, the announcement in the governing program to study and determine the poverty line at least will bring us a step further. Question number three. Can we eradicate the poverty? I said, yes, we can. Because poverty is man-made, so man can stop it. Number two, it's a violation of human rights, and we should not violate human rights. We should respect human rights. So poverty in the Kingdom of the Netherlands, as a violation of the right to adequate standard of living, has to be addressed. But what we see, there is geopolitical discrimination in the kingdom. So here is where the 4,000 guilders as a minimum has been presented by us to all political parties for them to make sure, to guarantee that every household at least get this 4,000 guilders a month. If that is what Transparency International said, that's not integrity. You have to do something about this poverty. So then we say, okay, start there. Full employment and training, of course, if people don't have enough knowledge, enough training for the different jobs that are there, please provide it and see on to it that we can get full employment. Lower the cost of living. St. Martin has the highest cost of living in the kingdom. And what is being done to lower it? We are entitled to the highest attainable level of health care. But what is the health care that we get if you compare it with, for instance, the fact that the Netherlands is advertising on their website that they have the best health care system of Europe and even of the world, years in a row, based on research that they have done and comparisons that they have done. They have the best one. Is that what we get? So the right to development is a right where you can develop yourself and you can come out of poverty. But is that what we can realize with a CFT that is strangling our government each time that they want to do something extra for the people? So I can tell you, we as anti-poverty platform, apart from these issues we have said, let's do something tangible too. And that's how we started with the Affordable Health, Food, and Nutrition Program. And the reason for that program was the report from the Dutch Ecoris, from the Ministry of Economic Affairs, an uh, assignment that they got, that from 2010 till 2016, the prices of food, nutrition, and non-alcoholic beverages has increased 53%. Highest increase of the kingdom, or even with the region, or the United States, or Europe. We cannot accept that. And so we came with best quality products from the region for the best price in town. 